What's going on? How's everyone doing today? Eagle Talks Football, we're back in with another video. Today, what we're going to be talking about is, of course, the international break is over. Arsenal are now going to be facing Bournemouth. And Mikel Arteta has just given us a massive update on the injury situation. A huge, huge, huge update. And I'm going to give you guys an update right now. But before we go any further, please do hit that like button on the video. Please do hit the subscribe button on the video also while you guys are at it. And we're going to go through everything that Mikel Arteta spoke about on today's press conference about Arsenal and all the Arsenal players. I'm coming down with a little bit of a cold, so that's probably why I haven't been live lately. But I will be live later tonight with Vibes from the Six, with the big panel and everything. So we're going to talk about that. But before we go any further, I'm just going to show you guys a little bit of an update on who actually is injured right now with Arsenal. So first thing you need to know is there's a whole lot of Arsenal players that have been either injured or missed international break or something. Right. And we're going to go through each one and what Mikel Arteta has said in a moment. But before we go any further, please do hit the like on the video. Please do hit the subscribe on the video. And I just want to say thank you to everybody as we have hit 30,000 subscribers. And that is massive for me. And that's massive for the channel. I never thought we'd get here when I originally started the channel. So I really do appreciate the love and support. But yeah, first, let's go to Takihiro Tamiyasu. This is the worst of them all. Mikel Arteta has confirmed that Takahiro Tamiyasu has suffered a setback and it doesn't look hopeful. Uh, uh, hopeful. A long period, uh, he could be out potentially. And we uh, have to see when he's coming back and how he reacts to the load. We will really need him. Uh, he's been incredible and the amount of hours that he's put in to get back. So unsure with the situation with uh, with. Uh, Tamiyasu, as Tamiyasu could be out for a while, and it is very annoying. I hope Tamiyasu can come back fit, but really and truly, we need to move away from Tamiyasu. He's just never available. He's very injury prone, and unfortunately, when he's available, he looks good, but that's little in, in between. The majority of the time, he is injured and he is out of the out of the squad. Now, there were there was a lot of reports from Arteta, but I need to just go through all the other Fabrizio Romano bullshit. So here is something on Martin Odegaard. He stated that Arteta is confident that Martin Odegaard uh, to be back before November international break. Uh, and he's saying yes, uh, he expects him to be back uh, in the next two in the next week or two. We have to see the next week uh, or the next game. Uh, he's not ready yet. He's not ready yet, but he said, uh, but he is confident that he'll be back by the next international break. So that means he'll be back by the, uh, before November something. Um, when asked about Thomas Partey, he said Thomas Partey is fit and ready. When asked about Gabriel Magales, I mean Gabriel Martinelli and Kai Havertz, he said the same. Uh, we will decide today. As for Ben White, Timber, and Sinchenko, are are quite close, but we have we have to hope. Uh, we have some hope, uh, positive news. So it's not 100% there, but some positive news potentially coming down the pipeline for the likes of Timber, Ben White, and Zinchenko. So just to get you guys up to date, Tommy Asu's out. Martin Odegaard could be back before the next international break. Partey's fit. Gabriel Martinelli and Kai Havertz are fit. And Timber, Ben White, and Zinchenko all look like they are leaning towards being back very very soon but not uh, coming they're close they're not fully there yet but they're close so now you're asking me what's going on with Bakayo Saka Bakayo Saka one of our main men our talisman the guy who fell down in the game versus uh, Greece for England is he going to be okay well Bakayo Saka's injury is not serious he is evolving well very well and we are hopeful so they're hopeful he's going to be involved as for Kai Havertz could be involved this weekend if uh, goes is at all to the plan and he's in training. So let's keep it 100. I expect both of them to be part of the team playing versus Bournemouth. I think uh, we all know that Kai Havertz well, was uh, was basically precautionary. That's why he didn't go for Germany international duty. As for Bukayo Saka, it was a precaution, obviously, to take him out of the game versus Greece. And he, I think he's going to be fine to play versus Bournemouth. Does he start or does he come off the bench? Depends on if we need him enough or or if Mikel Arteta believes that we can make enough rotation to win the game without Bakayo Saka. But of course, Bakayo Saka will always, always be a crucial piece to the Arsenal puzzle as we are going to be facing a team that is that is very good. Uh, at their ground. Bournemouth are a very good team at their ground and they're not one of the best teams in the league, but they are a team that have caused 
other good teams' problems. So we need to take them serious. But yeah, Arteta is confident that Martin Norgard will return by the 10th of November. That is massive. That also means that the people who were spreading those rumors about Odegaard potentially being out until December was just fear-mongering. Thomas Partey being fit is a huge piece to the puzzle. Also, as Mikel Moreno might not take that spot from him anytime soon. Uh, but of course, the main thing that everyone wants to know for fantasy managers is, is Bakaya Saka going to play? I think Bakaya Saka will play. And we know Mikel Arteta, he's going to put him on that pitch if he, if he, does, if he can. And most likely he will. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm just trying to see if there's any more news. While we're at it, let's just see if there's anything else that AFTV we're talking about. Uh, should Bakao Saka start? We're gonna talk, we're gonna get into that in a second. Uh, will Bournemouth be a, a a banana skin for Arsenal? Interesting. I don't think Bournemouth are gonna be a banana skin for Arsenal. Arsenal's record versus Bournemouth. This is what I was trying to show you guys. Arsenal's record versus Bournemouth lately. We have we have been relatively good against Bournemouth recently. Especially away from home. Look at those results away from home. 4-0, 3-0, 2-1. It's really just the Reese Nelson game that's caused us problems. I expect us to beat Bournemouth. Let's keep it 100. Uh, let's just kind of look at Bournemouth's team, though, because Bournemouth do have some players that we need to take serious. We can't take them lightly. This is the team that is expected to be out there uh, tomorrow. I expect Kyle Havers to be the striker and Trussard to be the 10, but everything else is probably the same. Why is Jorginho in instead of Declan Rice? I think Declan Rice would start, not Jorginho, so I don't know why they put Jorginho in there, but everything else would be as as is, except take out Jorginho and put Trussard and, and Kyle Havertz flipped him around. As for the Bournemouth team, I think it would be something like this. Uh, Semenyo is one of the danger men that we have to worry about. Semenyo has been on fire lately, I think. If I look at his stats, he, he scored two goals in the last, what is that, couple games in the Premier League uh, versus Southampton and Everton. But it was a recent game where he really, really bossed the game and he got a goal, and he absolutely killed it. Was it was it the Everton game, or was it the Southampton game? One of them. He really bossed these games, and and he and it's not just the goals; it's the ability for him to get the ball high up the pitch quickly and dangerously down that side it causes a lot of problems for people. Evan Nielsen, who recently signed, he's another person that we have to watch out for. But overall, we should have enough to break down this Bournemouth team and beat them. If I'm going to give you guys a score prediction. My score prediction is going to be probably 2-0 uh, to the Arsenal. We're really good at keeping clean sheets away from home. We haven't conceded too many goals away from home over this whole calendar year, and I don't expect that to continue to, uh, to, to change now. I hope that Arsenal play well. I hope we get the good result. And you guys let me know. Do you guys think Bournemouth could be a potential banana skin? Should we be more worried? I think I'm giving a realistic scoreline. 2-0 I think is a very realistic scoreline. And I expect it to be a situation where Kai Havertz gets on the goal sheet and Bakaya Saka gets on the goal sheet. And the two of them probably assist for each other because that duo is starting to look very, very deadly. And if we do get a third, I would love to see Gabriel Martinelli continue to get on the goal sheet as he has been starting to get himself in good form. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. This has been a quick update on all the injuries. Um, let me just see if there's any more injuries or updates that I need to give you guys as I, I think I've gone through all of them. So just to, just a quick recap. Martin Odegaard, we've updated you guys on. He's going to be back next November, uh, next international break. But Kai Saka, his injury is not serious. He's going to be back. Kai Havertz, he's expected back and available for this game. Martinelli expected back for this game. Ben White, Zinchenko, and Timber are close to returning. Thomas Partey is fully fit, and Tommy Asu is out injured. So yeah, that's pretty much it for everything that Mikel Arteta was going to give us an update for. And hopefully, Mikel Arteta and the Arsenal team can go deliver us a win. On the weekend. I'm out of here, people. You guys have yourselves a wonderful, wonderful day, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.